We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? Welcome back to O'Reilly Radio 148. This is the B-Side, recorded Friday, March 24th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go, oh, really. I'm your host, Andy Cowan. I still have my usual suspects. I've got Amber Besecker, Stephen Griffith, Daniel Atherton, and David O'Connor. Welcome back. All right. Awesome. So, uh, again, we, uh, we continue to make mistakes because we are human and, uh, and not alien pod people, life forms of, of whatever... Alex Jones uh, chooses us to be. So I'm not yes. gonna... no, yes. yeah, yeah, you're not a tortoise right now. So obviously everything's okay. So please, if you find any uh, any issues, let us know. Give us some feedback at O Really Radio Podcast at gmail dot com or phone it in at four seven zero two 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 six seven five nine. And definitely always a big thanks to our Patreon supporters: Donald Davis, Melissa G, Henry, Daniel Duncan, and Dan Smith. Thank you all. Okay. So I do like that our metric of our okay is whether or not David turns into a turtle. Is that really our metric? Apparently. <laughs> it's, a me- it's a metric. I don't know if it's <laughs> the metric. It's a metric for tonight. Okay. Possibly the metric for tonight. <laughs> okay. I, I can I can go with it. And I can also Okay, go... so we've had we have a we have a turtle metric. We mm-hmm. have a soul metric, mm-hmm. and apparently, when I'm not on, but David and Amber are, there's a Bukake metric. Yes. Yeah. I need to listen to that one. Bukake is metric cool. is one. Turtle metric is two. Two turtles for the night so what? far. What? Really? <laughs> oh, jeez. And I, I don't know. For those of you keeping soul, score Daniel? at home. We have yet to get to other stories. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so we were, we were just... Still uh, intact, currently. We were merely on the surface. So I mean, let's... Really uh, skimmed thing so well this is also um science is also our good news segment that's pretty okay. much how it's going to be i think from now on <laughs> because no, no, no. all, all the good news, good news in the world but it seems to be oh, rare man. it's it's rare enough that mostly science is the good news i i can't argue that so with that here it is if you wish to make an apple pie from scratch, you must first invent the universe. If you're scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you. It's not just a lot of mysterious things happening. There's a lot we understand out there, and that understanding empowers you. If you base medicine on science, you cure people. If you base the design of planes on science, they fly. If you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. That's right. Welcome to science. And apparently our first story of uh, the science segment is uh, something about delivery robots. And where's Fred? Yeah, th- <laughs> this would definitely be for Fred. He is, um, he is trying to get delivery from robots. And no, he's out door, there no. delivering as many parcels as he can because he doesn't want his job to be replaced by a machine. Oh, wait, never mind. No, wait, no, let's be honest. He would honestly order from the service and then sit at his door with a shotgun ready to kill the thing before it murdered his family. Possibly true. <laughs> Possibly true. So here we have on, on screen uh, the delivery robot in question from Starship Technologies. Um, okay. Traveling like around cute. the sidewalks of Washington, D.C. Uh, it's It's kind of cute, I guess. What prevents it from being mugged? Well, it's got a lock. How heavy is it? It is well, about 35 pounds. Oh, well, crap. And it drives at an average speed. Uh, it drives at an average speed of about four miles an hour. It has lights and a tall, bright orange flag to make it more visible to pedestrians. Uh, I, 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 without reading a little further down, I couldn't tell you what prevents it from being mugged. I would assume there's a lock on it because it's a cooler on the inside. Uh, no, there's no lock on there. Uh, yeah, it says automatically locks back into place. A smartphone app unlocks the shiny black lid to access the hollow insulated holding area, and then automatically it locks back into yeah, place. Yeah, it, it'd be difficult for you guys to see, but I've got right here is my cursor, and I'm circling over the little latch points. So, um, kind of where is the, that? Is it is that all plastic? It looks like a composite material. I'm looking at this thing and waiting for it to be used for organ delivery. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it does it seem that the, to go the unlocking now. mechanism is, uh, the catalyst for it is the smartphone app. So yeah. I guess it's a way to like personalize your delivery that, you know, barring some serious damage to the robot. Or the it's, robot just being absconded with. Yeah. Yeah. But at the it's same time, difficult. if somebody steals the robot, the robot is going to cry for help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's, it's a GPS tracker. In it. It's That's obviously what... got a GPS tracker in it, otherwise it wouldn't know where it was going. But um, I fully assume that somebody is going to see these things yeah, and try it, and abscond with them. It Guys. says, if a bot finds itself in a situation it does not understand, an unfamiliar driveway, for instance, or next to a parked car with flashing lights, there's always a human operator monitoring things. Guys, it, it okay. needs a gun. <laughs> I do not need to do a stand your ground story <laughs> based upon a robot. If look, someone look, tries to when, steal the when robot. When robbers are, are drilling into your delivery bot, police are minutes away. So I'm someone, saying. There it is. If someone tries to steal the yeah. robot, for example, an That's alarm sounds and the operator can speak through a two way speaker, the cameras can photograph the thief, and there are multiple tracking devices that can track the bot's location. And the bot and won't the bot, work yeah. or open unless you reprogram it. No, I know, I know what it needs to do. Everybody who's ever watched the original Robocop, the Magnavolt car system. That would lock the person in and then electrocute them to death. I can see that being an addition for this thing. You try to steal it, it grabs onto you, and then just hits you with like you know two hundred thousand volts. It so it just electrocutes anybody that isn't authorized to take your delicious food. Try, food you delivery. try to steal it, it then shocks you. Because this now is I thought, this is a food delivery. I told me a murderous robot story. <laughs> now, I, thought I the have to make Fred here. as paranoid as possible. And we have podcast. One of the interesting things here is that um, I guess the director of operations was asked, will it put people out of jobs? And he says, no, it's not a replacement. It's a supplement. But I think that's the short-sighted answer. Yeah. Uh, because if people are going to, you know, use this technology as a foundation for eventually oh. automating that service, the, the delivery service. Uh, right think, now, it's designed to complete deliveries that normally wouldn't have been placed with the human-based delivery options of the past. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, since it cuts down, like, one of the, the the lead into this is it talks about how, like, you know, here's your dilemma. Your favorite restaurant's less than a mile away. It's late at night. The weather's bad. You're hungry, but you don't want to leave the house. And you don't want to pay a $5 delivery fee plus tip. So... This is it, it. It sounds like it's <laughs> going to negate the need to tip your driver or anything like that because it's a robot. So I, I definitely think the short-sighted answer is no, no, no. It's just a supplement. But the long term is is going to be people springboarding off of this to create uh, a replacement. If you don't, There's... if you don't put six dollars and quarters in it, it will not open. You got to tip this robot. I bet. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, they call I... this one six D fifty seven. But it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? The the thing that I'm seeing here, um, it will take jobs, but the one thing that we'll still have delivery drivers for is anything when you're doing a longer range. Right now, this is great for urban centers, but in places where um, you have heavy traffic or unreliable drivers, unreliable walkways... Um, you're still going to need delivery drivers. Um, well, I but... mean, we do have self-driving cars at this point, too. Yeah, and if, if you notice, uh, alongside, there's these little circular dots along the side of the, the robot. Those are the same kind of proximity sensors that are uh, on the bumpers of most modern vehicles now. So it's using a lot of the same uh, the same sensor and automation technology that the automotive industry is using already. Well, until we all switch to uh, self-driving vehicles, I think we're still going to have delivery drivers. I mean, uh, I think, we're not far I think, off. Yeah, and and I think we will for for a time. And I I think the the medium term effect is we're going to see less of them. There will be less positions open, and that before like it's fully automated or anything like that. I think there's going to be a human element uh, involved in the process for some time, but I do think it will reduce jobs. Um, 
Yeah. In a, in a somewhat uh, near future. And I think it's important uh, as a story for opening up the discussion on like UBI and things yes. like that, because mm-hmm. this is just another one of those things that's going to get automated. It just is. UBI being the universal basic income that we've talked about yeah. multiple times on the multiple show. Times. Um, um, these I, these robots, had, uh, we, Daniel, these, these robots are European. Uh, Starship Technologies is an Estonian company. I'm not surprised. There's a lot. Uh, Estonia is actually becoming one of the premier countries for programming. Founded uh, by the co-founders of Skype. Hey. <laughs> Interesting. They've got the money. Yeah. Oh, do they have the money? Um, and for urban centers, this is brilliant. Um, I, I can totally see this being used to deliver Chinese takeout. Um, that, that is something I can see. Hi, it comes up to the, the apartment. Um, it is outside waiting for you to pick your food up. It just has to... Go from the restaurant, roll down the sidewalks, and right there in your major urban center, you've got your stuff from your favorite corner store or or restaurant. Yeah, because, I mean, Instacart is already a thing. And that requires a human driver at the moment. At the moment. But also, we're we're seeing human operators. And let's, let's face it, with how split screen technology is, is coming along um, a lot of stuff is going to be delivered through drones slash robots with a human operator in order to ensure safety and the protection of the payload right and until the narrow AI is is large enough that it can, it can create a, a decision tree that actually fits the real world we still need yeah. a human driver to make the decisions in our chaotic, not uniform environment. Yeah. The AI will have basic routing functionality, and it will learn every time the human driver takes the wheel to avoid obstacles and what have you. Well, when, yeah. it, when it, it meets up with an unfamiliar scenario, and it alerts the human operator that it needs to take over, it will start learning what the human operator does. Mm-hmm. Right. And given and that, the, yep, essentially given those operators points. will start putting themselves out of jobs. Yeah, not on purpose. They're just getting through it. But the thing well, is, yeah, no. But the jobs will be designed for that purpose. Of right. you know, we're only going to need you a certain amount of time until the robot figures it out. 